Hi guys, I'm Dr. Andrew Ivanyo from Surgical Oasis Institute in Newport Beach, uh, California. Uh, I'm a board certified general surgeon uh, who has been in practice for the last 22 years in Southern California and uh, uh, my uh, main specialty is uh, minimally invasive surgery including robotic and laparoscopic operation and I have dedicated my uh, practice mostly to hernia repair. So uh, today as uh, part of the um, conversation in regards to um, hernia repair and discuss the uh, controversial issues uh, about the hernia repair, I wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, the relationship with the, uh, abdominal wall hernia and diastasis uh, recti and why it's important to fix the diastasis recti when you have um, uh, abdominal wall hernia. So first of all, let's go over the definition and difference between the diastasis recti and uh, um, abdominal wall hernia. So uh, the abdominal wall uh, is a cavity that's uh, uh, surrounded by uh, abdominal wall muscles. So the two main muscles right in the center of your abdomen uh, that are very um, uh, thick and located uh, uh, in the center of the abdomen in a vertical fashion um, called rectus muscle. Those are the uh, six-pack muscle that we um, see on the athletes um, in the center of the abdomen and they're connected to the ribcage right in the center uh, all the way down to the pubic bone uh, in the lower abdomen. Uh, there are uh, main uh, muscles of the uh, anterior abdominal wall uh, and uh, basically part of the major part of the, uh, the core is strength. So these muscles are two separate muscles that they surround it with a sheet, uh, which is the, a smooth sheet that covers those uh, muscles and they're called a, a rectus sheet. Uh, these um, the muscles are connected or kissing each other right in the center of the abdomen. And they uh, created that illusion of the line right in the center of the abdomen, uh, mostly above the umbilicus that you see in the athletes uh, with the six pack. Um, that uh, uh, thick layer that connects those two sheets together is called the uh, linea alba, which is a very uh, thick uh, band uh, or fibrous tissue that connects these two muscles together in the center. Now, there's a lot of condition that uh, can uh, uh, disrupt this uh, normal uh, anatomical structure, including uh, uh, pregnancy, um, obesity, um, and uh, what happens is that uh, a thick band or linea alba or the uh, center attachments of those two rectus muscles uh, stretch out, so for example, in uh, pregnancy. And what happens is that rope is not a rope anymore and it's, uh, it's uh, uh, pulled uh, away from each other and, and created little sheets and it's a very, very thin sheet. So the linea alba actually changed to a, a, a very, very thin sheet in the center of the abdomen and the rectus muscle or the six-pack muscle completely separated from each other. And that's called diastasis recti or separation of the rectus muscle in the center of the abdomen. And we see that very commonly in um, female. However, there are some uh, um, uh, genetic uh, components uh, uh, to this uh, um, anatomical abnormality. And some people even without the uh, pregnancy or without being um, obese, they develop that problem. We also see that in uh, patients with obesity because of the constant pressure of intra-abdominal pressure over the rectus muscle in the center, they create that separation of the muscle from each other. And what happens is that um, this is completely different with a true hernia because in a true hernia, you definitely have a hole or a complete defect in the abdominal wall musculature, but in diastasis recti, you have um, only a, a, a thin sheet that separates the intra-abdominal structures from the outside. And what happens is um, those uh, damage um, or complications related to the hernia that we see normally, including the um, uh, obstruction or strangulations of the intra-abdominal structures like intestine, cannot happen with the diastasis recti. And uh, that's why a lot of surgeons uh, would not uh, uh, proceed with repairing the diastasis recti uh, because it sort of um, uh, does not have any um, uh, clinical uh, possibility of the clinical complications for the patient. 
However, majority of these dioceses recti are associated with their hernia. You know, in my practice over the last 22 years, I've seen a lot of patients that come in with the different type of hernia. And normally when you see that, they, a lot of them are associated with the dioceses recti. So what happens is that in um, dioceses recti, when your rectus muscle completely separate from each other and create that very thin sheet in between these two muscles, that sheet uh, disrupts in um, some areas, the weakest area of the sheet disrupts and create a hole or actual hernia. So a lot of times these dioceses recti are associated with the hernia. However, patients do not, uh, most of the patients do not appreciate the dioceses recti unless they are um, uh, in a different position. So for example, when they lie down and they try to crunch, they can see that bulge that come in, in the front of their abdomen. It's like a sausage uh, shape in the center, which is basically a bulge in the intra-abdominal structure through that thin sheet of the diastasis recti. And, um, uh, but when they stand up, they don't usually see that bulge but they see a complete poochiness of their, of their abdomen or bulging the entire abdomen, which is associated with the diocese in recti. So majority of times when we examine the patients and you can see the diocese recti has this a shape from the top out on and next to the rib cage all the way to the bottom. And around the belly button area is the area that they have the weakest um, portion of that sheet that disrupts and, and um, present with the uh, uh, peri-umbilical um, abdominal wall hernia or belly button hernia. And um, a lot of times with a piece of intestine or, or a piece of fat um, protrude through that and, and patient presents with a bulge in that region with uh, um, or inverted um, umbilicus or audi or, or even uh, associated with the on and off pain and discomfort. So that's the time they present to the surgeon or, or the doctor and they complain of um, discomforts and they uh, seek attention for uh, surgical repair. And um, overall, majority of patients, they get um, treated um, locally with, uh, with their open repair or laparoscopic repair for this hernia. However, I um, noticed that in my practice when uh, some of these patients come in and, and uh, only um, surgeon um, uh, repair that hernia, uh, majority of times they uh, come back with the hernia recurrence. And that's one of the problems that can happen. The reason is um, that area that is weak, um, that's called diastasis recti, and you have the center defect, which is um, hernia. If you fix just hernia means bringing the thin tissue together and closing that with a the suture, um, they're usually destined to um, come back again. And that's why we see a lot of these uh, patients that present uh, back again after a year or so with the recurrence of the hernia. So, um, in my opinion, uh, it's very critical to address the diastasis recti at the same time that you close the um, hernia. So, what happens is, um, the, um, during the operation, um, we fix uh, the, the hernia defect by closing the defect, but then we approximate the rectus muscle and fix the diastasis recti in order to decrease the tension on the um, hernia repair, so prevent the uh, hernia to uh, come back. Another thing that I've um, seen that happens is that when uh, some people uh, fix the uh, very um, umbilical hernia with the um, suture and then they reinforce it with the mesh, um, you, um, the patient develops a very firm uh, uh, and a strong area of the abdominal wall right in the center. However, because they have um, uh, diastasis recti on the top of that region, um, some of these patients um, with the activities, um, exercise, uh, or even uh, gaining weight and increasing the pressure in the upper abdomen, most of the pressure actually uh, um, uh, uh, focuses in the uh, upper abdomen and actually create worsening of the diastasis by pulling the rectus muscle away from each other. So I've seen that in my practice that sometimes patients presents a, um, a year or two after the surgery with the worsening of the diastasis um, so that peri hernia is 
uh, intact because the uh, mesh was used, uh, um, but the top of the abdomen is worse. So um, again, in my opinion, a lot of patients, especially uh, female after pregnancy, um, the periumbilical hernia is associated with the diastasis recti, and if you don't address it, there are potential problems, including recurrence of the hernia or worsening of the diastasis recti. So um, uh, uh, please, um, if you have any other uh, question or uh, concern about uh, repairing the diastasis recti or uh, fixing the uh, diastasis recti during the hernia repair, uh, contact my office at 949-646-8444. Uh, thank you. Okay guys, I'm going to share with you one of my uh, patients. Uh, this is a young lady who uh, has had uh, multiple pregnancies. As you can see, even though she's very thin, but she has a baby pooch uh, related to diastasis recti and periumbilical hernia. As you can see, her umbilicus is um, uh, protruded uh, and uh, she has uh, uh, diastasis recti, which is shown in this uh, uh, video um, and marked uh, prior to the uh, surgery. This is operating room setup. I performed these operations with laparoscopic uh, uh, technique through three small incisions in the lower abdomen. And I make those incisions in the bikini line and essentially they will be invisible after a few months. Um, during that uh, procedure, I uh, repaired the diastasis recti and uh, fixed the periumbilical uh, hernia. Diastasis recti is very obvious in the upper portion of this uh, uh, part of the video and I'm uh, approximating the uh, thick uh, rectus muscle together with these um, heavy sutures. So these sutures are uh, dissolvable and I do not use any mesh during that uh, part of the uh, procedure. However, closure of the diastasis recti uh, allows the um, um, umbilical hernia repair to be more uh, permanent. Uh, the results are uh, spectacular in these patients. As you can see, uh, she uh, does not have any baby pooch and her abdomen is very flat and umbilicus is repaired. For more information about this uh, operation, please contact my office at 949-646-8444. Thank you.